Hey little hoes, it's Kristen. Welcome back to my channel. So today is going to be a double word of the day. Some of you will remember my last video on gatation, and I actually want to update that video because it's no longer relevant in the terms that I used it last week. I thought that some of the uh, little crystal-like structures that I was seeing on some of my plants was in fact gatation, when in reality it was something called systoliths. And a big thanks to Steve's Leaves for their Instagram post the other day talking about systoliths and how many customers had um, contacted them about it and were worried about it being bugs or bug eggs and they were posting it to assure them that no there's no pests on it it's actually systoliths well I wanted to do this video and I probably will delete that other word of the day on just gatation since it doesn't quite make sense anymore now that I found out that I was seeing systoliths, not gatation. So systoliths are um, calcium carbonate deposits found on the leaves and other parts of the plants, most often the leaves. So I've done a little bit of research today and um, there's not a whole lot of information on why systoliths appear on plants. Um, I will link a few articles I found down below. One site said that it might be, they might be used as calcium and carbon dioxide reservoirs used in eating photosynthesis. So when their stores deplete, they could then tap into those systoliths. There was also an article that, um, I'm reading from notes down below. So, um, they are the result of calcium binding to cadmium and using it to get out those heavy metals. Just a way of purging out those heavy metals from the plant. Uh, they used tobacco as a reference. Another interesting article that suggested that systoliths were used as a self-defense for the plant so that they would m mimic eggs in some way as a form of deterrent for new pests, which I'm not quite sure that quite makes sense to me, but it is one answer of many. Some of you may know that some plants use natural variegation as a form of deterrent for bugs. So like use leaf miners, for instance, they'll see some networking of weird coloration i.e. variegation, and think the plant's already infected so they don't want to go and lay their eggs there or infest that plant because it's already occupado. So another interesting fact I learned was that under a microscope, systoliths have different shapes and scientists actually use that to help identify um, different species and for classification in the plant world. Um, there are certain families that are more prone to getting systoliths than others, which I thought was interesting. There was made mention that pipers, pepper plants, are very prone to it as well as cissus, and I did notice that my piper has had a lot of systoliths and the, not the top, but the undersides of the leaves will be coated in the almost like little silica beads. And that is in fact the systoliths. And even if I wash them off, they'll return in another couple days. So that is a little description on systoliths. If anyone knows more about them, want to leave a comment below about it, I'd love to hear it. But that is systoliths, and I will insert some of the pictures that I used last time that I mistakenly referred to as gatation leftovers, or essentially like crystallization of plant sugars, plant nutrients on the leaves. And, but yeah, I will insert part of last week's video the, for the gatation portion of this word of the day video. 
Um, and I did have at least one good shot of true gutation. And according to Steve's leaves, gutation shouldn't leave any residue on the leaf. Uh, you will most often see it just as dripping water from the tips of the plant, if you will. So yeah, hope you guys didn't find this too confusing. There's always something new to learn and inform yourself about. So sorry I misinformed you guys. I might go and delete that video, like I said, um, just to try and make it a little bit more accurate. Uh, so yeah, hope you guys have a great day, and we'll see you later. Bye! Hey guys, and welcome back to Word of the Day, where I introduce you to a cool new botanical word or phrase. Hope you find it interesting and enjoy. So today's Word of the Day is gutation, and I'm really excited about this one. It's kind of a new one to me too. Plants have pores. They have stoma, uh, the plural will be stomata, and hyathode. Um, so your stomata, you've probably heard of, they are on the outside of the leaf and deal with um, transpiration. They take care of gas exchange within the plant. It releases the oxygen and takes in carbon dioxide. The stomata have little guard cells around them that act as like little sphincters um, to open and close the pore. Hyathodes, on the other hand, are open all the time, and they are usually found at the ends of veins in, within the leaf. So, gutation takes place under certain conditions, and most often those conditions involve it being very humid out. For that reason, um, it happens quite frequently in greenhouses. What happens is... Uh, a plant will take up more moisture than it needs and because the stomata close up shop at night there is nowhere for that excess moisture to be released so what will happen is uh, that excess moisture will build up pressure within the roots causing it to move upwards and the hyathodes which are open pretty much all the time will then take on the responsibility of moving that moisture out to the surface of the plant to then get evaporated and move out. 